Hello again. Okay, here's about 10 minutes of discussion on linear functionals. The dual space is the space of linear functionals. So to find the dual space, you've got to start with a space, and v is our vector space. And v star, the dual space, consists of homomorphisms from v into r. It's just linear maps that start at v and end in r. And this dual space is again a vector space. It's the vector space of linear functionals on the vector space v. Just linear maps from v to r. So we need to check that v star is actually a vector space. And the first thing to check is that if you've got two linear functionals, alpha and beta and v star, then their sum, alpha plus beta, is again a linear functional. We also need to check the scalar multiplication. If we've got a linear functional alpha in v star, and a scalar lambda, then lambda alpha, which is an element of v star, is again a linear functional. So this makes sense. So now that we've built the dual space, there's a little bit of terminology I want to introduce. Now if you think of v as consisting of vectors, some people would call the linear functionals in v star covectors. So these covectors are just vectors in the dual space. Now this terminology may be not so standard among mathematicians, but I think it's kind of it's convenient, it's kind of quick. So vectors in the dual space, we might call them covectors. And what do they do? Well, a covector eats a vector and gives you a scalar. So if you start with alpha, a linear functional, so it's an element of V star or a covector, and you've got a vector V in big V, then alpha V is just a scalar. It's the result of applying the linear functional alpha to the vector V. And the important thing to remember is that alpha is not an arbitrary function from v to r, it's a linear function from v to r. So that's what covectors or linear functionals do. They act on vectors. But we can think of this very concretely in terms of a basis. So if v is some finite dimensional vector space, then it turns out that the dimension of v and the dimension of the dual space v star is the same. Now to see this, we've got to pick a basis. So let's have v be spanned by a basis e1 through en. So v is n-dimensional. Then we're going to have v star spanned by e upper 1 through e upper n. I'm going to use upper indices for covectors. But I've got to define what these e upper 1s and e upper n's are. Well, e upper i is a linear functional. So it's a, it's a covector, so it's going to act on vectors and produce a scalar. And e upper i, when acting on e lower j, a vector, has to give a number, and the number it gives you is delta ij, the Kronecker delta, which is 1 if i equals j, and 0 if i doesn't equal j. So very concretely, you can think of e upper i, it's a linear functional, so it's a linear map from v to r, as projection onto the ith coordinate. And the point is that these span the dual space. So by constructing a basis, we've shown that the dimension of v and the dimension of v star are the same. There's n elements in a basis for v, and then there's n elements in the dual basis for v star. Now, any two n-dimensional vector spaces are isomorphic. But just because they're isomorphic doesn't mean the isomorphism is natural. And in fact, v star is not naturally isomorphic to v. On the other hand, if somebody gives you an inner product, then you can get a map from v to v star. How are we going to define this? Well, we're going to do it like this. v1 is a vector in v, so f of v1 has to be a linear functional on v. So f of v1 takes in a vector v2, and the result is the inner product of v1 and v2. You should check that this is linear. And it's not only a linear map, it's an injection. Why? Because the inner product is positive definite. And it's also an isomorphism, provided the dimension of V is finite. So there's a very concrete way to think about spaces and dual spaces in terms of row and column vectors. But we first have to choose a basis. Anytime we're talking about row and column vectors or matrices, we've got to pick a basis. And in that case, a vector in big V can be written as a column vector. It's something a matrix acts on. Similarly, a linear functional alpha in V star can be written as a row vector. And why is this? Well, it's because you can take a row vector and apply it to a column vector and get a scalar. 
So in fact, row vectors are linear functionals and column vectors are vectors. And the relationship between row and column vectors is essentially transpose. You can take a column vector and get a row vector by applying transpose. And of course, to do all of this, you've got to pick a basis, which implicitly means you've picked an inner product as well. So you shouldn't be too surprised that you've got a map from V to V star. Now, not only can we take duals of vector spaces, but we can even take duals of linear maps. And we call these adjoints. So let's start with two vector spaces, V and W. And let F from V to W just be some linear map. And we're going to define an adjoint map which goes from the dual space of W to the dual space of V. So it goes in the opposite direction. And that's the important thing to remember about these adjoint maps. Now how are we going to define this? Given some linear functional alpha from W to R, so an element of the dual space of W, then it's our job to define F star of alpha a linear functional on V. So this is an object that's going to take something in V and produce a real number. And we can define it like this. The action of F star of alpha, which is a linear functional on V, takes a vector little v in V and produces alpha applied to F of V. And remember that F is a map from V to W, so we can put the vector V into F and get an element of W, which we can then plug into alpha to get a scalar. Now if you wanted to think about this in matrices after choosing bases and everything, you'd realize that F star is really just the transpose of F. Now that we've got a way to convert spaces into dual spaces, we could ask what's the dual of the dual of a space? That is, what are the linear functionals on the vector space of linear functionals? Well, think about this. We should first think about this evaluation map, EV. It's a bilinear map from V and V star and it produces a real number. And it's defined by taking a vector v and a linear functional alpha and applying alpha to v. It's really just evaluation. You should think about why this is bilinear. Now this is going to give a natural injection. v into hom v star r. And hom v star r is just the dual of the dual of V. And this map from V into HOM V star R is just the map that you get be because it's a bilinear map. Because the dimension of V is the same as the dimension of the dual space, and it's the same as the dimension of the dual of the dual space, in the finite dimensional case, the natural injection above turns out to be an isomorphism. Although you do need a basis to build the inverse. The important point, though, is that the map from V to V star required a basis to even get started. The map from V into V's double dual doesn't require a basis. So this injection from V into V's double dual is natural. In the finite dimensional case, this natural injection happens to be an isomorphism. But you never need a basis to get a map into the double dual. You do need to choose an inner product in order to get a map into the dual. As another kind of cool example of this, let's take a look at the relationship between tensor and HOM. So we're going to define a map from W tensor V star into homomorphisms from V into W. How are we going to do this? Well, W tensor V star is spanned by little w's tensor alphas. Alphas are linear functionals on V. So we've got to say what the linear map F will do to W tensor alpha. F of W tensor alpha has to be a homomorphism from V into W. So we've got to figure out what F of W tensor alpha does to V. And it's got to end up in W. So F applied to W tensor alpha is a linear map. And when that linear map is applied to V, the result is a vector in big W. And that vector is W times alpha V. Alpha V is a scalar, so we can multiply W by a scalar and get a vector in W. For finite dimensional vector spaces, the naturally defined map above is an isomorphism. The dimension of W tensor V star is the product of the dimension of W and the dimension of V. Likewise, the dimension of HOM VW is the dimension of V times the dimension of W. The map F is injective and therefore is an isomorphism. In fact, if we want to be real concrete, we could choose a basis for V, E sub i's, 
and we could choose a basis for v star e upper eyes. And then hum v v would be spanned by e lower i tensor e upper j. If you think about it for a little while, these e lower i's and tensor e upper j's are really just matrices that are zero except for a one in the ij entry. Well, okay. Uh, thanks for listening. So we've covered some stuff about tensor products, a little bit about dual spaces. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know about linear algebra or really anything. All right. Peace.